Welcome to our second week exploring Christian meditation. I know some of you tuned in last week. I had a little bit of a, a taster into what meditation is like. Second week, we're going to have a little look at John Main. He was the founder of the World Community for Christian Meditation, and it sort of sets it in a little bit of a, a context. So John Main was born in 1926 and he served in the closing stages of the war, joined the religious order for a short time and then studied law at Trinity College in Dublin. He graduated, he joined the British Foreign Service. In 1954 he was posted to Malaya and he joined the governor's staff and he studied Chinese. And that was really where he was introduced to this form of meditation. So he was on a routine assignment to deliver a goodwill message and he met Swami Sati Anantanda. I won't have pronounced that right. But this was a monk who ran an orphanage and an ashram on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. And John Main was deeply impressed with this man. Uh, peaceful, calm, seemed to be deeply wise and he learned from him this simple way of meditation the faithful recitation of a mantra uh, two periods of meditation at the beginning and the end of the day and the monk encouraged John Main to meditate but to meditate as a Christian and John Main took a sacred Christian word as his mantra which is Maranatha which is still used and each week John Main would return to his teacher to deepen the discipline of silence, stillness and simplicity in his daily meditation. John Main said during this time his own spiritual life was opened to new depths. And I think that's important that people re-experience something in their spiritual life and in their faith. So John Main returned to Europe and he taught international law at Trinity College in Dublin and he continued this daily practice of meditation integrating it in with his other prayer rituals and prayer disciples which included for him the daily mass and then he entered a Benedictine monastery in London and now as is often the way when he entered the monastery his novice master told him to give up meditation and told them to use more cerebral and imaginative forms of prayer, which he did. And there's this constant tension between different forms of prayer, the ones that use imagination and words, and the ones that try and get rid of the use of the imagination and the words in our prayer life. Um, he followed his instructions, did what he was told, but at the same time he found his spiritual life became quite dry um, and I think that's always the real risk when we try and just link to one way of, of, of working. Joe Main then went on to Washington DC and became a headmaster at a Benedictine school. So there he was guiding young spiritual seekers who came to him for wisdom and what he found is that he was drawn back to this form of meditation and he also began exploring the Christian tradition for this way of prayer and again looked at the Desert Fathers and the Desert Mothers, the early Christian monastic life, it come back to about the 4th century. Um, and he also found John Cassian, um, who again wrote quite a bit around meditation in the very early years of the church's life. And he then realised that this form of meditation was part of the Christian tradition. It was a Christian spiritual and theological tradition which had been neglected for so long. And so he began to meditate again. He began to relearn and uncover the practice of the prayer of the heart, of pure prayer, with his formula, his mantra, his prayer word. And again, he, he dug back into that Christian tradition and looked again at the Desert Fathers and Desert Mothers, 
who also went on to influence St. Benedict's teaching on prayer, but also had a great impact on a lot of other classic Christian um, <clears throat> prayer books like The Cloud of Unknowing. Um, uh, a, a great piece of English literature and meditation from the 14th century, uh, written by an anonymous monk. It led him to a much deeper reading of scripture. And again, I think this is one of the important things about meditation. It begins to open scripture in a completely new way. And we begin to connect with certain of Jesus' teachings, which we maybe found a lot more difficult in the past. What does poverty of spirit mean? What does leaving yourself behind mean? You, you know, those words that G Jesus uses and meditation helps us get a, a new angle on that. St. Paul, um, he got it. I'm sure he really got it. And one of St. Paul's teachings, which became much more real to John Main, was when Paul talks about how the Holy Spirit prays within us. And John Main said that teaching became alive in him through his own experience of meditating. So here's a little um, bit of writing by John Main on prayer. <clears throat> he says, All Christian prayer is a growing awareness of God in Jesus. And for that growing awareness, we need to come to a state of undistraction, to a state of attention and concentration. It is a state of awareness. The only way that I have been able to find that, to come to that quiet, to that undistractedness, to that concentration, is by the way of the mantra. And you'll see those words that keep coming back, um, attention, awareness, concentration, they always come back. It's important though that n none of the people who encourage us to explore Christian meditation, none of them say it is the only way to prayer. We use this with other forms of prayer, but this has a, a deep simplicity and effectiveness in it. As I say, John Main opened the first Christian Meditation Centre in London and then went to Canada where he was invited to um, teach and practice meditation with a Benedictine community. And from that small beginning, the community has spread around the world. And one of the great things about meditation is it, it's very ecumenical. People from all denominations can come and join in it and we don't end up fighting and arguing over doctrines or practices. It's just a way of meditating together. And it has spread, and I think there's a real thirst for that just now. Lawrence Freeman is the current um, director of the World Community of Christian Meditation, and he is also a Benedictine monk. So it's important to remember that it's got a deep history. It goes back to the fourth century and it, it does allow us to, to explore and connect to a lot of Jesus' teachings in quite a different way. Important thing though is that we do it. Um, one of the things is it's quite nice to try and find a space that feels quite peaceful and calm for us to be able to meditate. Um, and when we meditate again, the posture is really important. Feet flat on the floor, um, we're sitting upright. So that idea of being awake and alert, um, if we're slouchy, we'll get sleepy. So it's about being alert. Um, if you've got a back on your chair, try and just move yourself off it so that we're sitting in a, in a, in a comfortable but alert position. And some of us like to just Close our eyes gently to close our eyes and hands uh, just in our laps or wherever is comfortable. We're going to say the word Maranatha, four syllables, ma ra -na -tha. And we try and listen to it so we don't have any images, we don't try and imagine the word or what it means. We just try and listen to it as we silently repeat that word. And we are going to go drifting off on all sorts of thoughts and other things that come into our mind. 
and the idea is to be aware when we drift away and then to gently and faithfully bring our attention back to our word. And we're not trying to evaluate it or to say how good or bad or anything like that. We're just trying to do it and connect with it. So we'll try it for another 10 minutes. And this time again, we shall just record it. So we'll do a wee prayer. Then we'll set the timer. And I'm going to move the camera just a wee bit forward so you're not looking at me. But let's start with a wee opening prayer. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to the silent presence of the Spirit of your Son. Lead us into that mysterious silence where your love is revealed to all who call. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus.
A reading from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus speaking to the disciples. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This we would normally um, share in our thoughts and experiences if we were meeting in person and I know one comment from last week was that someone found it easier than they thought they would have. So that that's really good and I hope we try and continue this over the next few while. <clears throat> but let's finish with a prayer for the world community of Christian meditation. Let's pray. May this community be a spiritual home for the seeker, a friend for the lonely, a guide for the confused. May those who pray here be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to serve all who come and to receive them as Christ himself. In the silence of this place, may all the suffering, violence and confusion of the world encounter the power that will console, renew and uplift the human spirit. May this silence be a power to open the hearts of men and women to the vision of God and so to each other in love and peace, justice and human dignity. May the beauty of the divine life fill this community and the hearts of all who pray here with joyful hope. May all who come here weighed down by the problems of humanity leave giving thanks for the wonder of human life. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining once again and hopefully we'll continue to explore the role of Christian meditation in our spiritual life over the next few weeks. Thank you, take care, God bless.